Good morning. Hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, hey, first off, uh, I'm Dan Jelinek, uh, president of Easton Diamond Sports. And I would like to uh, start out by welcoming and thanking everyone for taking the time to join us today. We've got a fairly large group on this call, uh, which includes all of our Easton employees, a select group of our most valuable retail partners, and some very special guests that you will all get a chance to meet here in just a few minutes. I wanna start off by saying that while we are officially launching a very special bat this week, the campaign is really about celebrating the history of Easton and all that our brand has meant to the sporting goods industry over the past 98 years. For those of you that may not know, 2022 will mark the 100th anniversary of the Easton brand that was founded by Doug Easton in 1922 as an archery company and then managed by Jim Easton until 2006. Suffice it to say that the B5 would not have been possible without Jim's early determination to design the world's best products, which continue to drive all of us at the company today. I'm gonna let our team and our guests tell you more about this special bat and what it meant to them as players and coaches, but the fact is the Green Easton, as it became to be known, was one of the most innovative and iconic sporting goods products of the past 50 years. It single-handedly put Easton on the map in the late 70s and forever changed the baseball industry by making the game more enjoyable for all those who swung it, while also providing a platform for new technologies going forward to this day. We're therefore very proud and excited to be bringing back a new version of the original B5 that we feel again will change everything going forward. I also wanna call out that while there have been a lot of hands involved in this BATS relaunch, and I could never call them all out here today, I wanna to thank Matt Arndt and the engineering team for continuing to find ways to be innovative in a very competitive industry. I would also like to thank our entire brand team, especially Austin Hurwitz, who has done an amazing job bringing the B5 back to life in a very unique, creative, and nostalgic way that only he could orchestrate. I would like to thank our sports marketing team who have already been out working with numerous high school and college programs, but especially Jim Darby for all his help re-enlisting some of the game's most iconic players that used Easton in high school, college, and in their professional careers. And finally, I would like to thank all of the former players and coaches who have supported us and are now helping us relaunch this special bat, some of whom you will meet today. Lastly, and certainly not least, I'd like to thank our strategic retail partners that are supporting the B5 rollout while helping to amplify this unique opportunity for both of us to bring such an iconic product back to market. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand things over to our very own BK, who's down in the SoCal Hit Lab with a, with a very special guest from our local area. So BK, take it away. Hey, welcome Team Easton and everybody out there. BK here with Easton in the Hit Lab, Thousand Oaks, California. Uh, pumped to bring you guys the Green Easton launch today. Um, got a couple of really special guests with me to show you guys how these bats work. We've got Jack Wilson right here, ex-MLB player, Thousand Oaks High School head coach. And we've got Royce Clayton right here, ex-MLB guy, coach right across the street, Oaks Christian. Two MLB All-Stars right here. God, I think between the both of them, we've got over 12,000 career MLB at bats, over 3,000 MLB hits. So we got a couple guys who swung a Green Easton back in the day in here to help us launch it with you guys at home right now. So, Royce, thanks for coming today. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, my pleasure. Remember this thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, I remember watching as a kid. My brother was at Arizona State and Barry Bonds, Todd Devereaux. I mean, unbelievable teams. They swung to the Green Easton. And I went back and it's like, man, I gotta get this bat. And uh, my very first own personal bat, because I just was so hyped to see what these guys were doing with it. Damn it, you know? So uh, I went home and found a, a place where I could buy a bat, got Green Easton. Unbelievable. The rest, the rest is history, man. I had a great, um, you know, high school career. I uh, used my Green Easton the whole entire time. And 
uh, the rest is just, like I said, history. History, and we're making history again. That That's is right. legit. Great story from Royce. Yeah. Jack, yeah, buddy. thanks for coming, my man. Absolutely. Oh, man, I'm excited. I mean, I, when you brought these out, you know, obviously the new ones were phenomenal. But seeing this one, definitely some crazy memories. You know, hey. Growing up as, in Little League and stuff like that. So, I mean, if it's your first hits, your first doubles, homers, everything comes from right here. So it takes me back to the day with my dad being my coach, you know, in Little League and driving the field on Saturday mornings and, and picking up this bad boy and swinging it. So really excited to see the, uh, see the new version. Great story. Jack and I were standing in our little uh, museum in the hallway over there, and Jack's like, hey, I think you ought to bring back the Green Easton ball. Yeah, here we are, and the buzz are. is through the roof. So. And it should be. No, it, it looks phenomenal. I love the, you know, the, the way you take the, the old look and kind of give it the new, the new flair. The 40 years later, now it's, it's beautiful. It sounds great. Love it. All right, so should we take a couple hacks? Swing. Let's go. All right, let's do it. Boys, you want to jump in first? Yeah, yes, sir. See how this hip rack works? It's going to be 180. Oh, my yeah. God. 110 mile per hour extra view up. Let's do throws, boys. What's that? Let's do throws. What do you think? I'll just put the yeah. yeah, cool. Get a feel for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little low. I got you. Ooh. Sounds good, good ping. What'd you think? So how's it feel? You know, Tell everyone about the Green Easton. It's just like you said, Jack, the sound is very familiar. Yes. Sounds like the old bat. Which is key. That's, that's the sound of baseball right there. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it jumps. I mean, this thing gets there in a hurry and it jumps. It was coming off. You can hear the ball. Oh yeah. It's got a great ping to it. It does. All right, it does have it. Oh yeah. Royce, yeah, yeah come yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll play with you. Go get that root canal fixed. It's going to be my fun, fun part of my day, right? Uh, DP and root canal. All, All right, right, here we go. go. We'll try the thousand ups. Uh, well, you want, where do you want me to do this? Take it with you, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, friend. Sure, buddy. Let's get the bunch out. There we go. There we go. Don't kill me, all right? Here we go. It's aggressive pass. Aggressive. Get on top. Dude, I mean, you got a son playing at Grand Canyon, so he's going to get the oh, swing. Yeah. And they got, 
I like the little thicker handle this year. Uh, the little thickness in here. They say, you know, the thinner handles, you get more width, but you tend to roll over more. So with the thicker handle, you get more, uh, it's more back control. So like an M110 is a very popular model for baseball bats because it's very balanced. That's got a nice, nice handle. And this is, this is a really nice handle for, for back control. Really feels good. Let's hear that pin a couple more times. Yes, sir. Where? See that? I just got hit. I just took a pitch. I'm going first. BK, the wild man. Jesus. What's that on the field? 89, like they used to throw back in the day. Now he throws by eight. Yes, sir. Appreciate you Absolutely. coming in. MLB All-Star right here. Great run to Easton. Hope you guys out there got to hear that ping of the green Easton bat. This thing's going to be fire this year. Absolutely. Are we passing it on to the next guy? All right. I think it's Callan and Darts to you guys. How's everybody doing this morning? Well, I don't expect an answer, I guess. You're all <laughs> muted. <laughs> got Callan and the legend. Yeah. In my own mind. <laughs> The guy who actually brought the first Green Easton out to the field, um, got it in ballparks all across the country, got it to Omaha, uh, very special launch. What, what does it mean to you, Darvs? Oh, I love this. You know, you and I talked about this for many years. I'd say, God, can we bring the Green Easton back? And, you know, the amazing thing, Callan, is when you think about a product, you know, you mentioned the Green Easton and everybody knows what it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's terrific, and I'm tickled pink that this bat is coming back. I think one of the great things that this launch has been able to do for, for Darbs and I, um, you guys know us, you know we like to talk, we can talk way too much, but this has given <laughs> us the opportunity uh, to, to connect with a lot of old friends, a lot of great baseball players, um, hear stories that I'd never heard before about this bat and how great it was. Some, some I'd heard before, but then to hear them from the tellers themselves has been pretty special and I think you got to connect with a lot of old oh, he, uh, friends. What was really fun for me is when this project started and you guys said hey can you reach out to some of the former players who might have played in the era when the Green Easton first came out prior to the Black Magic. So I contacted some of the guys and the response to it was are you kidding this is really cool and these are a lot of guys who I hadn't talked to in years so yeah, the excitement on this, you know, it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it's it's great. And just to be a link, um, be a constant thread through the history of college baseball, the, the, the history of baseball in general in Omaha is great. And uh, we wanted to share some of the stories that we've gotten to hear over the last couple of months getting this ready by bringing in some of the, the guys we've been talking to. Yeah, I'm here. There we go. Hey, everybody. I hope you can see the head coach of the Cal State Fullerton Titans, Rick Vanderhoek. Hookie, how you doing today? Doing very good. Doing very good. Hook has, as you guys might know from all our great elite Eastern teams, um, he's been at Fullerton, associated with Fullerton, just as long as Darbs has been at Easton. Um, Played there in college, has been with the program, went there as a player, went to Omaha, uh, won a national championship, was uh, an assistant coach on a couple other Omaha teams and national championship teams, and now eight years now, Hook, at, at Fullerton, and you've taken two of your own teams to Omaha, is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so. Hookie, okay, how um, many times have you been to Omaha as a player, assistant coach, and head coach? I think 17. 17 times in the College World Series. Yeah. I wonder if anybody even comes close to that. Yeah, there's plenty. There's I don't know, Hookie. Well, well, Hook, you and I were, were talking uh, a few weeks ago and, and bringing you up to speed on this, and you told me a great story. Um, I think you said it was 1981. You remember the first time you picked up a Green Easton. 
you remember what bat you had been swinging, you remember putting it down. Can you, can you give us a little bit of your perspective on and your history on that? Yeah, you know, I, I was a punch and Judy hitter. I didn't hit balls uh, like Gonzo. And, and I saw that one in person. And that was off of Mike Harkey, who at that time was one of the hardest throwers in the country. We didn't have um, all the technology we have now, but Hark threw pretty hard. And uh, I saw that ball, and it is the farthest that I've seen. And I've been a lot of games. <laughs> But I swung, I swung a Tennessee thumper, the old Worth. Uh, it was 34 inches, 34 ounces. They didn't have minus fives. Minus, it was just a bat that there was no way to break it. Um, and I was fortunate enough to meet Darbs back in those days. And um, Darbs was always around Southern California. I played for a high school guy named John Herbal who Darbs knew well. Um, then I went to Cerritos College, and when we got there, they had green Eastons. And it was like, holy moly, how do you have these things? And, you know, that was the bat you used forever until they came up with the Black Magic. And then they went to the Black Magic, but they still had the old green Easton. And uh, it went all that way. So I couldn't tell you, um, but early 90s they were still using those bats the green eastern and the black magic at that time um and then they changed things up but it was you know that was it if you were a kid and, and you watched it you wanted it and you know the thing that people are taking away from you jim um you developed relationships with probably a million people yeah thanks cookie and good people like you my friend but I'm fortunate enough to now I can still call you just to see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to keep up with Callan and you, huh? I talk to him too, but I, I'll call you out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Playing the guitar or on the <laughs> golf course, hacking it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's the truth. Hey, Callan was talking about the, the home run you said Gonzo hit up in Alaska. Yeah. W were you playing against him? I, that was my very first time coaching and I was supposed to go to Alaska with Dave Snow and then Dave took the Loyola Marymount job and that was my first job out of college. Uh, I went up and coached with Mike Weathers and a guy named Larry Corrigan who you probably know those guys too. Sure. And um, yeah it was my first time you know and, and Gonzo you don't know this the mound at Fairbanks is only 59 feet. Because <laughs> Fine time to tell him. Right. Hey, that makes it harder. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I put the pitcher's mound in that field when they built it because we were the first team that played there. And Mike Gillespie was, I'm pretty sure, coaching the North Pole Knicks who Gonzo played for. And uh, I ran into him maybe five years later, uh, saw his son play. Um, but then didn't, you know, but I, I'll, I'll never forget that. And there's some things you don't forget. I forgot a lot about this game, but that I'll never forget. So, Hook, these are great stories from the past, and, and it's awesome to hear. Oh, I think we got Gonzo there. What's going on? Um, hey, I wanna, hey, guys. Hey, I want to follow up with Hook with one, one more question, Hook. And, I mean, you've seen so much um been around the game for so long um use this bat as a player what does it mean to you now or how do your your guys how do you think they're going to react you get to bring the bat back that you used and you get to give it to your players um now for a whole new generation to to experience i mean we've been missing baseball for so so long it feels like years and years, even though it's been months. We're so excited to get back on the field. Um, and we feel like it's even extra special. We've been gone. We get to bring this new Green Easton back. But how is that going to, you know, be for your program, bringing this Green Easton back to Fullerton, kind of bringing back those memories and, and hopefully bringing you back to Omaha? Well, it, it's going to be good. You know, we're, we're building a new facility at our place. And I've been going and cleaning out uh, my office because I have to move for the next year. And I've 
found a lot of old stuff and I'm going through these scrapbooks and stuff that I didn't even know were there. Nobody knew they were there. And so, you know, I, I've taken them and had somebody else do it because I'm not a computer guy very well. My mom like said, this is my first laptop ever. And well, your grammar is really good, Hook, so don't worry about the computer part. <laughs> but I, I'm going to have, um, I, I've put pictures of old guys swinging the old Easton um, on there. I mean, Tim Wallach swinging an old Easton. Um, you know, a guy named Mike Rubel. Some guys that, that were really, really, really good players in our program all the way through it, all the way through Katze and whatever went with it. And, you know, it, it, they got to swing it, but they know a little bit more about things now because they, they've had plenty of time to educate themselves. I'm sure, Gonzo, it took you a while to figure out what kind of wood you wanted to swing. And, yeah, it really did. Yeah. Yep. And, and that, that's, that's part of the progress of what they do and learn about the game. So I'm super excited. Good. That's awesome, man. Well, Hook, we really appreciate you joining today. We're really fired up. Like I said, everybody wants baseball back. Um, I know for you, <clears throat> I mean, baseball is everything, just, just like most people at our company, and I know we've all been missing it. So excited to bring this bat back. Thank you for your help with it. Thank you for joining us today. Can't wait to get back out, uh, you know, on the field and, and see the Titans with this and, and do some exciting things. And we're going we're gonna to toss it over to Gonzo now. Um, and, and, you know, Gonzo, we, we heard that great story of, of Hook seeing – seeing that ball you hit in Alaska. Darbs might disagree, but... Yeah, it, well, I, I'm sure you hit a shot there, Gons. But um, in 72, I swear I gave up the longest home run ever in Anchorage <laughs> when Bump Wills hit a ball off me that landed in Vladivostok, Russia. <laughs> hey, one thing I want you to know before we start counting, Lena, you, I, I look at you every day, big boy, because there's your picture here in my den. And uh, so That's awesome. I think about I you every day, my friend. We're coming Thank to you, you live from the Darby Studios here in beautiful <laughs> Los Altos, California. That's awesome. So, wow. so Gonzo, do you remember that ball that you, in Alaska? And was I it the do. Green Easton as is rumored? It was. You know what? I, I got one better. I actually still have the Green oh, wow. Easton. Whoa. Oh, wow. Wow. That's I so still, awesome. I, I had my, I called my mom when, when you guys uh, were talking about bringing the bat back, uh, Darbs had talked to me and I said, man, I might still have that bat. And I grew up in Florida. So I called my mom right away. Uh, she sent it over to my brother and we kind of cleaned it up a little bit. It still has, you know, it's got a couple little dents in it and you know, the scrape and the caps loose. Remember the old caps used to pop oh, yeah. once in a while. So the cap <laughs> is loose, but uh, yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's so much, uh, fun talking about this battle yesterday I did a lot of media stuff talking about it and even the people that I was talking to still remember this bat and some of them were just novice players and others you know moved on to play at a different level but I mean it always it brings a smile to everybody's face and and what's exciting for us now as former players is uh you get to see the dads even the ones that didn't make it to the next level but their kids are going to have an opportunity to swing the same style bat that you that you know the parents swung when they were kids, so it's it's pretty exciting. That is cool. Hey, you sent me a picture that is so cool. It's of you and Tino Martinez, who of course is also, uh, you know, in in our campaign here, of you guys standing in front of your dugout. I think it was a Tampa Tribune picture. Tell everybody yeah. about that one. Yeah, that, well, Tino and I were high school teammates. Uh, I hit second in the order. He hit third. And uh, they took a picture of us, like, right, you know, before the game was getting ready to start. And we were kind of talking, going over the game plan. And uh, we both had our East Ends up, you know, and getting ready to hit. So that was pretty cool. And then when you said, hey, uh, you know, I know you and Tino swing the bat. I go, you know what? I, I might have a picture of that. And I went back and my grandmother saved everything. So I have all these albums. So I went back and started looking and I found them all. And I tell you, man, it, it, this bat brings nothing but great memories to a lot of people. So, um, you know, in a time right now where we're going through the pandemic and so many 
uh, negative things are going on in the country and things like that, this is something that brings a smile to everybody's face. So I'm excited. It's a perfect timing for, for Easton to bring this bat back. That's so great to hear. Awesome. Um, you know, what was it like when when this bat came out in high school? Because I know there was an, there were other aluminum bats around. The transition had been made from wood, but like this was the one, the first bat that just finally brought some technology to the game, more than just kind of your old like lead pipe. I mean, do you remember what it meant to kids and just you know what it did to the game in terms of you know we're a little biased we think it changed the game and brought more performance for the better but it was the first bat that people took some care in producing that really engineered it um do you remember was there buzz around it back then oh absolutely i was uh, i still remember i was a uh, a senior in the little league uh which is 13 14 15 and uh you know there was guys above us. I grew up in a hotbed of baseball in Florida, and and uh, guys like Fred McGriff and Dave Magadan, those guys played in our same little league. And Tino and I were in a lower, you know, level, you know, under. But we used to see these guys come up there with those bats, and these were guys that, as a little kid, you idolized the older players. And uh, when you saw them swinging that bat and the way they swung the bat, you. You know, I didn't grow up with a lot of money, and I was like, Mom, I got to have that bat. So it was something that, you know, your parents sacrificed to get you the, the proper tools to go out there and, and, and play the game. And, and, you know, like I said, I still have this bat to, the, to this day, and it's uh, something that I cherish forever because uh, it, it carried me through Little League, through Legion Ball, through high school, uh, all the way up to, you know, college. I even used it in college. And you know, that was a big thing when you start watching the College World Series. You know, we, you know, when you're a younger kid, you're watching these guys on TV and they're all using that bat and you're seeing guys hitting home runs and hitting doubles in the gap and things like that. And you're like, I got to have that tool. Even though you may not swing it the same way as those guys, but uh, it's, it's just something mentally for, for an athlete or a player that you feel like you want to have what the best have. And those guys were the best players in the game and you want to you wanna have the same type of equipment as those players you know it's funny you mentioned Dave Magadan because in 1983 using the Green Easton uh, I remember I was in the stands at Omaha throughout the series and Magadan went his his first nine at bats in the College World Series he was playing for the yep. University of Alabama he got hits nine yep. for nine his first nine that's a series record that still holds today absolutely I mean Mags was a great hitter I was fortunate yeah, I idolized him as a young kid, you know, being a left-handed hitter, but uh, I was fortunate to play with him later on in my career. So, uh, you know, we could all sit sit around together. I'm going to see a bunch of guys in Florida in a couple weeks, and if we talk about this East and Bat, I guarantee you everybody has nothing but smiles on their face and has great stories to tell about uh, using that bat. It was it was a hot bat, and it's, it's going to be a hot one again when this comes out. I I've been on uh, looking on Instagram and all that stuff, and I think I sent you a clip, Darbs, of a someone gave a kid a bat out in the field, yeah. and the kid freaked out when he got it. I mean, that, that those are I, it, it brings a smile to everybody's face, and like I said, especially during a time right now where there's a lot of tough things going on, uh, this brings back a lot of great memories. Yeah, it, it really does. Yeah, I was gonna pass that one on, but the kid freaked out so much his language got a little salty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's only human. I know. Hey, one thing I got to ask you real quick, um, a little bit off the subject, but when you got the hit off Mariano, of course, ironically, you and Tino, you know, were high school teammates. Now he's the first baseman on the other team. Did you guys correspond at all during the series or was there any, you know, looking at each other, smiling and stuff like that? You know, during the series, we talked a lot before and, you know, uh, going into it. But after this, the World Series was over, they went off the field. And of course, we celebrated and you know, a couple hours later, I grabbed my phone, and that was the first text message that I got. You know, you would think your family or somebody, but it was Tino. I mean, he must have went right into the locker room and texted me right away congratulating me and said, enjoy the moment. You don't know how many uh, opportunities you're going to get like this, so enjoy it while you can. And that meant a lot to me because, you know, like I said, we played together all the way up through Little League and then high school. And then, of course, we went our separate ways when I went to South Alabama and he went to University of Tampa. But uh, 
you know, we still to this day continue to be best of friends and we talk a lot and he's working in the Yankees organization. I'm with the Diamondbacks organization. So, uh, you know, we still have a lot of great fond memories of uh, playing together and, and using that green bat at Easton. That's cool. So, Gonzo, you, you brought something up I wanted to touch on a little bit. Um, your son, Jacob, following in your footsteps, high round draft pick. He's, he's with the, the Giants organization. If you remember, I ran into the two of you at a recruiting trip. Jacob was on a few years back at an Easton school, and we got to connect there too. And I know Jacob went, went the pro route right away, but baseball is a generational game. Connects fathers, sons, fathers, daughters, <coughs> mothers, whatever. And I know Jacob's not going to be able to use this bat, but, but you brought it up before about fathers and, and sons. Um, that's one of the things that we really wanted to do with this bat, and you're going to see it more in our marketing, connecting. Um, like you said, these are weird times, but like having this connect baseball players throughout history, um, kind of what does that mean to you and, and being able to, you know, reconnect you're around young players all the time um is is that something that that you think is important like bridging oh, uh, bridging that get that gap absolutely i think uh you know my brother uh obviously is with you guys with his travel ball organization and uh he just got the bat the other day and just seeing how excited kids are kids all want the newest the latest and the greatest so when they see uh, former big league guys that they know and that they've heard of that have used something very similar in the bat. You know, we use the old school bat. Now this is the new generation, the new era bat, the different, uh, the different cap and things that you guys have brought out on this bat. I mean, uh, your, your guys uh, back at the lab have done a fantastic job of this. I mean, it feels good. I want to make, I want to come out of retirement and use this thing <laughs> and come out, but uh, we'll get darts I mean, to pitch to you so you, you can be successful. <laughs> maybe I can use them. I, well, I'll have Hook cook, cook, coach me too. So we, we we're all set, but I mean, uh, you know, even my son, he's in, like you said, he's in professional. When I got the package of the Easton box with the shirt and hat, it was so cool. And then we opened it up. He goes, dad, this is, this is super cool, man. So uh, I just wish that this would have been around when, uh, you know, he was in high school and he would have had a chance to use this bat. But even him, you know, looking at it, he goes, man, this is a really sweet bat. And, and so you know that the guys at the lab have really hit the mark on this bat to, to really make it stand out and be, you know, like Easton is. It's above the rest. Awesome, man. We love it. It's, it's going to be fun. It really is. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait. I can't wait till it gets out on the market and, uh, pulling up to games and seeing kids swing that bat. And then it's it's going to trigger, like I said, for a lot of dads and parents and stuff, a lot of great memories of it makes them go back to their childhood days. And and that's what it's all about is, you know, building that bridge between generations. And uh, you guys doing this, uh, you really brought a lot of great memories back to a lot of people. So I, we really appreciate that. Well, we appreciate you, my friend. Yeah, thanks so much, Gonzo. I know you got a busy schedule. Keep working hard. Thank, thank you for everything you do for the game and for us at Easton. And uh, appreciate it, man. Thanks you a lot. It. We're gonna Th thank, thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And now we got one more special guest for you guys. Um, we got Kyle Peterson, the voice of college baseball uh, and the Little League World Series for ESPN. KP, I see you there. Are you able to turn on your video? There you are. There, boys. Hey. JP. Hey, Kyle. Hi, guys. Welcome to. Welcome How many to under par are you right now? What I'm hole are you on? Just a minute. I had to try to make a putt. Hold on. <laughs> Good day, boys. All right. We just finished 18. Your timing's wonderful. How are we doing? Hey, boys? Where'd you shoot? Uh, I don't know. But okay, I, I, so I, probably 67, 68. Uh, yeah, lift out for 68. <laughs> Which nine are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. KP, before we get going, just just Darbs and I want to point out there what what we got in the background there. You, you, yeah, you see you that? Guys may, you guys may want to work on your uh, your accommodations right there because clearly well, you have well, the wrong jersey behind you. Well, for those of you who are watching, obviously Callan and I both attended the University of California, and Kyle went to Stanford. And of course, arch rivals on the sports field, but both schools obviously. 
uh, very respectful of each other. And Kyle, oh. I will tell you, I you you're finishing golf there. Well, I played twice this week with your former coach, Mark Marquis. And Did Kyle, you? you might want to call him. And I've tried to recommend him take some lessons, Mark. <laughs> but you know, you know how stubborn he is. I'm just glad he's playing golf. I didn't know he was a golfer. That well, he's not. But but <laughs> but, but 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 as he says, he gets him out of the house for five hours, which his wife has asked him to do. Yeah, I would say Susan's probably a big fan of him playing golf. So that's that's good for <laughs> yeah. everybody. Anyway, go ahead. Well, KP, thanks again for joining yeah. us today. Um, you know, we've talked to Hooky, we've talked to Gonzo. We wanted to bring in your perspective, um, which your perspectives are many. I mean. You are a huge uh, part of this, this game. Um, you're an Omaha native, been around the College World Series, a baseball historian. You work so hard. You're trying to bring the played college. In the world, played in the yeah, World Yeah, played Series. in the World Series, trying to bring the College Baseball Hall of Fame to Omaha. All the work you do with ESPN, you know, played in Omaha, big leaguer. Um, you're in the media for baseball. Um, and you're also in the business of baseball with your site, D1 Baseball. Yeah. Um, so you you bring a lot of different vantage points and perspectives. Um, we sent you one of the VIP Easton kits, the Green Easton, yeah. obviously you knew about it. W what does this all mean to you? And, and what do you think it can mean to, to college baseball and, and just work? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here's the sad part, guys. And I know you're in the bad business, but this is just a reality is you made the day a lot worse for a lot of pitchers when you came out <laughs> for this thing. And, and I tend to side with those guys first. But in this case, I, I'm pretty excited about it. The, first of all, the marketing piece for this has been insane. I mean, what you guys have been able to do, and it's, it's crazy what the power of social is. But the reality is that social doesn't go crazy unless the product is cool. Like the, the two, that, that's just the way it works. But if the product's cool, social has a chance to go crazy. And, and everybody's loved it. When I opened the box, I had, had a few buddies we were with them that night and I said hey you guys got to come over to the house I got to show you something but you can't tell anybody yet because Callan you told me that I mean this was like the, the I mean, if, if I told anybody you were going to come to my house and drag me away so <laughs> but I did tell them and I, I had them come over and open the box I hadn't even opened the box yet and I opened the box up and um, it was uh, it was really cool guys I, I you know going back to I was the dork that used to go to all the college world series games when I was a kid and so I mean, I saw this bat all over the place and then um, used that, used the black magic when I was growing up. And I could never hit. So I can tell you right now, it wouldn't be a great endorser for your product. But um, ultimately, I think what you're doing is awesome. Like old school in this game is the absolute greatest. And I think you guys have seen firsthand and you're going to continue to see firsthand. The reaction in this thing is going to be unbelievable. That, that's awesome to hear. And you're so close to it. Um, you know, we're, we're, everybody's been missing baseball. We, we need to get back. We really miss being in Omaha. I mean, it's both of us. It's one of our favorite places in the world. So the fact that baseball's starting to get back out there, you know, we've seeded this bat to all of our college programs, um, getting ready for the 2021 season, just hearing that they're back in on a lot of campuses, a lot of fields starting to work out. Um, Give us some positive vibes. What are you hearing about college baseball? What I mean, I know the Drover opened back up in Omaha. People need to get to Omaha. What what what, what do you got? Okay, so here was kind of cool. Um, a buddy of mine belongs to a course down in Stillwater, Oklahoma. So we came down to play at Oklahoma State's course, which is where we're at right now. And I texted Ventura and Josh Holiday right when we got here. Well, Robin's in California, but Josh was here and Josh just came out. Um, and we actually got to talk a little college baseball and understand what's going on on campus right now. And um, I mean, clearly it's a, you know, it's about as fluid a situation as it possibly gets, but the good news is it sounds like a lot of programs are going to go through fall ball with different protocols than they had before, which we all have anyway. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's happening. And, and we've got, we got baseball coming. Um, and is it going to look different? Of course, but I mean, hell, everything looks different for us right now. So, why wouldn't that? Uh, but I know that when the coaches that I talk to, and I hope it's the same for you guys, I assume that it is, there, there's a lot of optimism right now that, okay, yes, this stinks, and we know we're not through it, and we know there's a lot of other things that we need to do. But at the end of the day, we think we're going to play. Um, and they're starting to play in the fall, and, and Lord willing, we got a season that I'm sure looks a little bit different. If we don't play 56 in the spring, who cares? 
Like, let's figure out the number that it takes to put a season together and ideally get the best eight to Omaha. Um, and whatever it is from an attendance standpoint or whatever else, it's just – what we thought was normal before is never going to be normal again. So let's try to figure out how we can get as close back to it as we can. If that means playing games with not as many people in the stands, who cares? We're still playing games. We're still developing guys. And you still get a chance to swing your bat. Um, and, and hopefully, even though I may be sitting in my living room, uh, or not my living room, but in the studio in my house, um, hopefully we got a chance to put it on TV. So we're, we're, we're getting closer, and it feels like there's optimism out there. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. And, and uh and, and, and you already texted me about it. We're looking forward to it. I know you've already put the Green Easton up in your in your home studio. So oh, we'll yeah. get some book there. And uh, hopefully you're broadcasting games and and, uh, and and you're seeing this bat a lot. And uh, it's bringing some joy back um, to players and coaches and, and everything. Um, I wanted to bring up, you told me a great story one time uh, growing up in Omaha, going to College World Series. Uh, one time... A, team was coming off the field I think it was Wichita State you told me one of the players uh gave you a, a great souvenir leaving the field they gave you their your his protective cup but yeah. <laughs> that, that's a story for another time but do you have any <laughs> specific memories about the green Easton or just how how prevalent it was or any any big homers or anything you remember with this with this bat I mean, the cool thing is, is just go back and look at the history of, of college baseball, which, I mean, I know that's one of the reasons you guys are bringing this thing back because it was, it was such an important part of what the history is. And, and going to the College World Series so much, um, that's what it was. I mean, it was – that's what they swung, <laughs> the guys that you wanted to be. And, and when you grow up in Omaha, that's your big leagues. We, we don't have a big league team. You, your big leagues are the guys that roll through the College World Series. It's Barry Larkin and it's Bonds, and it's Robin, and it's all of these guys when I was growing up. Pat Aud or uh, Jim Audley was the guy from Wichita State that you were talking about that, yeah, we were waiting by the bus. I mean, you wait by the bus and try to get anything you could. And, you know, I get a spike every once in a while. One year I got a hat, and one year the guy looked at me. I wasn't Audley. It was somebody else. He looked at me. He's like, I, I mean, I give you my cup. I said, cool. <laughs> I mean, I think it was like 10 or whatever I was. And, and I came home. My mom's like, you got what? I said, I got something. I got something. And she goes, we didn't have him sign it, did you? I'm like, no, I didn't have him sign it. Yeah, but I got it. Um, but that, that was, that's the way we grew up, man. I mean, that was, that was what we watched and who we loved. And, and your product and your, your company um, and that bat in particular – was a big reason that all those guys were were doing what they were doing on that stage I'm fired up and I know I made a joke about it on the pitcher side in the beginning but the reality is is there's some iconic memories that you have from childhood based on whatever your passion is and the reality is if you played baseball in that time of year you know this bat you just do and so when it comes back right now I think we got a chance to to allow this generation to know this bat that's pretty cool yeah it's fun well KP yeah. we're gonna we're going to let you get to the 19th hole there. Um, but thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to visit with us today. Just so you know, I, I know you can't see everybody, but we have over 120 people on this call. Yeah. Our entire company this is a big event for us. And just for you to come on and, and Gonzo and Hookie and, and, you know, be so positive and boost our morale and, and give us some positive vibes. We really appreciate that. Um, thank you for all you do. And, uh, for the game and, and we look forward to connecting in person in Omaha and, and, and thanks again for, for taking this time out. Hope you made a lot of birdies today. Hey man, boys, we made a putt on 18 that, that, that yeah. you know, got a little bit more, more money than we showed up with today. So that's a good start, but do me a favor. You more guys green. are going to have, have more money too, because a, a ton of people are going to buy these bats. So buy a new Jersey. The next time that we go on and hang something. <laughs> else, that's a deal, buddy. Go bears. Yeah. Be well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, KP. And uh, Darbs, I think. Uh, well, I'll tell you, just just talking to those three guys, we could talk, and we've probably gone too far, you know, too long anyway. But just talking to those three guys, think how many more we can talk to. This is fun. Yeah, this is great. Um, I think Darbs and I are going to sign off now. Um, we appreciate all our special guests. Hey, Team Easton, this is huge. I hope everybody is feeling great. Everybody is pumped up. Um, Darbs and I have been having so much fun with this. And uh, again, big thanks, like like Danny said, to the whole engineering team, the back category team. Um,
but everybody at Easton, this doesn't get done. Um, there isn't this hype without the entire team. So we appreciate you all. Um, Austin and his team been doing a great job. So we want to. Great hype at a time when our country needs great hype. So great job, folks. So we're going to sign off now. Uh, everybody, remember, the Green Easton lives on. Thanks a lot, guys. I, uh, I have the distinct privilege, uh, honor. I'm so pumped. I mean, I was kind of like this the entire time, just listening to everybody's stories and, um, and just seeing some of those faces, a lot of, you know, in particular with Gonzo growing up, you know, idolizing players like that, um, who obviously use this amazing bat. I grew up, you know, using in, in kind of this bat as well as the, the black magic and some others too. Uh, but now I have the distinct honor to introduce our final special guest of the day. Um, get ready for something a little different. You better get that volume cranked up uh, to, to the highest level possible. What can I say about this guy I'm going to introduce? I mean, what can I say? Um, he really does everything. He's, let's see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss, we talked about this beforehand, I'm going to miss at least 12 other things that he's amazing at. But he's a former pro player, a former pro scout. He is a, currently a, dynam, a very dynamic coach, both baseball and fast pitch, travels across, around the country, even right now. Um, in the middle of COVID and all the other craziness going on. Um, he's also an amazingly um, powerful motivational speaker. You'll get a taste of that. Even if he doesn't try, you'll get a taste of that. And it just so happens, in case we're not all feeling really horrible about ourselves, he happens to be an amazing uh, music maker, an amazing hip hop artist. And keep that under your hat for a second, because that'll come into play in a second. But let's, if we could bring in CJ Beatty. I'm, uh, CJ, you there? What's up, man? Man, what's happening, man? I, that, uh, dude, I just want to. I first of all, I just want to say this, man. To be on this on this call right now, this is history. Like this is something that I could tell my great grandkids one day. Like, dude, I was on that call, man. I mean, to see the names, uh, just to be a part of it. I mean, Gonzo, Tino Martinez, Barry Larkin. That, that's huge. I mean, it's it's absolutely an honor to be on this call today, man. So thanks, well, thanks for the introduction. I know. Thank you for giving up your time. I mean, you're always traveling around. I mean, you never, st I know you never stop, uh, but you always make time for us. Um, I know we've had, I mean, in the short time we've been able to connect, although it feels longer now, and really from the beginning of the pandemic, um, we had a chance to kind of get to know each other through all these crazy circumstances. Um, you're obviously, you know, a very unique individual, a lot of different talents and, and stuff like that. I think what you just said too, I think is my first question is, so you are a former player, played at the highest level. You do coach players. You're hands-on every day. This is, your, this is your life. This is your career. This is your passion is coaching, motivating. It all obviously kind of fits together. So give, given, you know, your own personal sort of feeling about this bat, not even just the bat itself, but kind of what it means, but to kind of bring some of those former players and that history with the new stuff and bring it to this new generation that you, you coach and you motivate every, and you care about every, every day. I mean, I know, I know a lot of you wear your heart on your sleeve. You're that kind of guy and you care about a lot of the, the players that you coach. So yeah. What does it kind of mean to you to, to be able to kind of bring that to them and, and kind of see it through, you know, through their eyes and just as a player yourself too. Man, you know, it, it's truly, it's truly remarkable. I mean, seriously, the, the things that stuck that stood out to me the most when we had those, those iconic names just come on this call right now. They said when they shared the bat, just like any other time, when they shared the bat or the information about it coming back out or showing them right there in front of them, the new B5, people mm -hmm. begin to smile. People, I mean, immediately because they, they have so many fond memories about that bat. There's a lot of, look, I, I coach youth travel ball, right? Yeah. And, and when I was able to let them know that the B5 was coming back out, there was a dad, no joke, there was a dad that says the only home run he had in his life was with the <laughs> B5. You know what I'm saying? And what I told him then, I said, well, you shouldn't have put it down. You maybe would have made it to the league. You That's know, right. You, you, you believed in the wrong hype. You should have kept the B5 in your hand. You would have hit more. But it's just so crazy how a professional athlete can talk about how that bat helped them get to where they are at. And then I can go on the flip side and say how a travel ball parent, how a father that didn't make it to pro ball, that possibly didn't play 
um, um, in college, right, still has the same energy that a professional Hall of Fame type player has. So I think that that is that speaks for itself to say that it's bigger than a bat. You know, yeah. it's it's historic and it's something that creates excitement no matter where it's at. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, we talk. You and I have a unique opportunity to talk about that a lot, especially with everything going on. But you know, marketing guy, you, you know, admit it. Um, but I think you know, that does kind of feel, I think Gonzo said it too a second ago, uh, unscripted, you know, I think just the timing of it too. Um, obviously none of us could have predicted all this other stuff going on, but mm -hmm. so, so a couple other questions for you too, before we, we got to get to like the special thing that we want to show everybody before, before anybody else in the world, we've got something we want to sort of uncork for the first time, but well, you know, some of these players that you talked about, I mean, Gonzo was just on to, uh, Bo Jackson and the names, um, you know, I know we're kind of the inspiration for something we're going to unveil in a second, but, you know, being a former player, I mean, you, you played with like, I think the, the generations that, that's on the field right now, like the mm -hmm. Tim Andersons and so on. I mean, I know you still talk to a lot of those guys, but even for like the, the generation sort of just before that sort of connected, to, you know, sort of the new guard too. I mean, what did it kind of mean when, you know, not just to bring the bat back, but some of those, those people, some of those names that, I'm sure like me, I mean, you grew up idolizing and maybe kind of helped spark your, you know, your fire, not just play, but, you know, hey, I can do it too. I can make it to the pros. I mean, it, it, I mean it, again, it's everything. I mean, you can't tell me the time where you are re-watching, you know, you're watching SportsCenter and they're doing a, a flashback of Bo Jackson climbing the wall and you're yeah. watching your dad just marvel over the TV screen like, son, that's the guy I used to watch right there. He used to do this. He'll break a bat like it's a toothpick over his helmet. So, you know, I'm like, Dad, that's who I want to be like. So when you see iconic people like the Barry Larkins, John Elways, Gonzo, Tino Martinez, Tony Gwynn, just to name a few, that was able to touch that bat. I, as a kid, I didn't look. I didn't care if it looked like a broomstick. The fact that they had that bat in their hands, I had to have it. And yep. uh, to have iconic people like that endorse it, it really means, because a lot of people are not going to endorse something that they don't believe in. So to yep. have that caliber, those caliber of names, to say with a smile that they will go to fight, they will go to battle for that bat, and that bat plays an intricate part in how they develop through the course of their career, you got to have it, man. You have to put your, your hands uh, on that bat and take it a couple of swings. Yeah. I mean, you know, I feel the same way. All right, let's do this. So we're going to show, we don't normally do, well, there's a lot of firsts today. We don't do any <laughs> of this stuff. We don't do, we don't do live events, really. I mean, we're going to do more of them. Um, we've gotten a chance to work together through, you know, with the Stay Ready campaign. And, yes. and uh, you've been amazing, like from day one, um, kind of motivating, keeping it, keeping everybody positive. I mean, that's your thing. Um, so when we started, when we started talking, we were like, all right, I know we want to do, there's more than that. There's more uh -huh. that you're obviously capable of and excited about. There's more that feels like a really genuine fit with Easton. We talked about bringing this bat back. I know we're going to do all sorts of other fun stuff down the road, but, and I teased it for everybody. One thing that maybe some of the folks on the, on the, on the call right now don't know is that you just so happen to have some pretty mad skills from a, a rapping perspective, from a hip hop <laughs> perspective. So we're going to unveil something in a second that is like really your baby. All we did is say, say, here's some of the people. Here's the, here's this bat we're going to bring back. What do you think? What, what do you, what would you do with it? So how do you want to, how do you want to set this up? Would you, uh, I know, I don't, I know you don't need much, much sort of uh, in prodding to sort of just take over, but you got like some freestyle in you. Uh, what, what do you, what do you think? Austin, I appreciate it. I mean, you guys, you guys have done a phenomenal job. You guys are against the grain, but in a great way. You know, it's in, in, I mean, the last little tidbit that I would like to share is yeah. that we're going through a lot as a country. I mean, a lot, something that we've never, this is uncharted territory, but just like he, like Darvis was able to say that this is the right height for the right moment. I mean, things like this is what creates excitement in times where children parents and youth coaches need it the most. And if you, we can bring a little light to the communities, I think we just knocked the door down with stadium lights. So I, I appreciate you guys allowing me to be a part of history. Thank you so much. 
My pleasure, man. Honestly, I'm so excited to, to let, sort of unleash this to the world. And, and uh, we got plenty of other stuff that we're cooking up together. So um, more to come, just the beginning. Well, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, buddy. Well, I uh, honor of kind of helping wrap this up. I hope everybody really enjoyed this live event. It's, the, it's really the first. Um, there's a lot of firsts that are coming. This is just the tip of the iceberg on what we have planned to, to really bring this amazing bat to market. Um, all the great stories of the old bat and obviously the new one. Um, this is my little PSA announcement. If you aren't already subscribing to Easton.com emails, you're missing out, please do it. Um, likewise, if you're not following us on basically any social media channel that exists, um, please do it again. You'll be the first um, outside of this small little group in this event today. You'll be the first to find out what else we have in store. So with that, um, I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this event and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.